Hi everyone, my name is Rukshan and this is my first YouTube tutorial so I'm really excited about this and in this series we are going to create a server-side timer using WebSockets with Socket.io, Nest.js and Flutter. Our backend is going to be developed using Nest.js and our frontend is going to be developed using Flutter. So this would be our final front end. You can see there are a couple of buttons and I will tell you how to implement each of these buttons and the code underlying it. Also in the coming videos, we will be implementing our backend application as well. In this first video, we are going to have an introduction to this tutorial series and we will discuss why a server side timer is useful and what are the useful use cases for that. And also we will have a comparison between HTTP and WebSocket protocols and then we will discuss what are the importances of WebSockets and why do we need it for this server-side timer. If you have any comment or feedback regarding this video or the tutorial series, please leave them in the comment section below. I would be really happy to know your ideas as well. Okay, now let's have an idea why do we need a server-side timer and not a client-side timer. Now in general, in software design and development, we don't trust our clients. What do we mean by trust a client? Take for example, a quiz application. In a quiz application, we give a specified amount of time to a user to answer each question. Now in this one, since we are giving some kind of a time duration for each question, we have to maintain the integrity of that timer. Now in a client side timer, there is some chance or opportunity for the user to manipulate that timer. For example, he may close the application or put it in a background and when he returns, the client side timer is still running. So like that way, there are many ways to manipulate a client side timer. So it would not be a, uh, an ideal solution for a quiz application. Now, since we don't trust our client, we can't have that timer logic on the client itself. And that is why we need to implement a server-side timer where we are putting that important logic, the logic of the timer, on our server. Now we can trust our server because the server is a trusted environment. Although the client is an untrusted environment and the user can be having ill intentions or he tries to manipulate our timer, in a server-side timer scenario, that is not possible because we are having the logic on the server and we are just displaying that timer on the client side. Therefore, the user can only see that timer and uh, give some control commands that we allow him to and there is no chance for him to manipulate or tamper with the timer. Therefore, we can maintain the integrity and this would be important, for example, in a quiz application. Now that we have an idea, why do we need a server-side timer? Let's have a comparison between the HTTP protocol and the WebSocket protocol because this idea would be very important for you when we are implementing this in code. In HTTP protocol, which is used to communicate between a client and a server, the first thing that happens is a client request is sent from the client to the server requesting whatever data is needed by this client. Now a client may be a Flutter application or a web browser, something like that. Now once this request is reached to the server, the server will analyze it and it will send a response to the client and that response is called an HTTP response. It may contain whatever data or information requested by the client or an error. So once this HTTP response is received by the client, we can say this TCP connection, that is the connection between this client and the server, is terminated. So that is how most of the internet communications are working. For example, REST APIs, which are widely used for internet communication, is using this HTTP protocol. This is working for most of the use cases, but it is not useful for real-time communication. And that's where we have to use something called the WebSocket protocol. Now let's have some idea about the WebSocket protocol. Usually, in a client-server communication system, we have the connection between client and the server using TCP protocol. And on top of this TCP protocol, there is usually an HTTP protocol functioning as well. Now, to implement the WebSocket connections, there has to be a WebSocket protocol between the client and the server on top of that TCP protocol. In order to upgrade this HTTP to WebSocket protocol, 
the client will ask the server for a handshake. That means the client will request the server, okay, shall we upgrade our connection from HTTP to WebSocket? Like that way the client asks from the server. And the server responds, sure, let's upgrade our connection from HTTP to WebSocket. And that is called an HTTP 101 response, which is also called a switching protocol response. The name switching protocols comes from the fact that it is switching the protocols from the HTTP protocol to a WS or the WebSocket protocol. Now this whole scenario where the client sends an upgrade request to the server and the server responding with an HTTP 101 response is called a handshake. It's just like you offering your hand to a friend for a handshake and the friend also offers his hand, then you have a handshake. You offering the hand is like the handshake request and the friend offering his hand is like the handshake response. And after you both shake hands, we say we have a handshake. Now after this handshake between the client and the server, we can say that we have opened a WebSocket connection between the client and the server. Now this WebSocket connection is the most important thing that brings real-time functionality using this WebSocket protocol. Because through this WebSocket connection, we can send data from client to the server and server to the client simultaneously for as long as we would like. And this connection only terminates when either the client or the server chooses to disconnect from this socket. Until then, this WebSocket connection is persistent. Now let's have some couple of facts related to HTTP and WebSocket protocols. Both of these protocols are used for communication using TCP protocol. There is one important word here that is the OSI model. This stands for Open Systems Interconnection Model. Now this model is a conceptual model that helps us understand how data communication takes place between various systems. Now in this OSM model, there are several layers and uh, HTTP and WebSocket protocols are working in the application or the seventh layer according to this OSM model. Now the TCP protocol works in a lower layer called the transport layer that is the fourth layer according to this OSI model. And another important fact about both of these protocols is that they are used for client-server communication. The HTTP protocol is called half-duplex and here duplex means we can take place the data communication to both directions. That means from client to the server and server to the client. Here half means only data communication can take place only one direction at a time. That is why it's called half. But in contrast, in WebSockets, it is called du full duplex, which means we can take place the data communication to both directions simultaneously. And that is why it is called full duplex. This is very important when we are concerning about real-time communication, right? Okay, so the other important thing about these protocols is how the messaging pattern is functioning. When we use the HTTP protocol to initialize the data communication between the client and the server, first, we have to send a request from the client to the server asking for whatever data required by the client. Therefore, a request response messaging pattern is found in HTTP protocol. But when we are using real-time applications, we don't want to send a client request to the server first to start the data communication. We need to get whatever data is updated on the server directly without a new client request. And that is why we have to use WebSocket protocol because in the persistent bidirectional messaging pattern, we can get whatever updated data from the server to the client without a new client request. Since this is persistent and bidirectional, we can ensure we are having real-time communication between client and server when use the WebSocket protocol. If you remember from our previous slide that I mentioned, we have a TCP connection between the client and the server. But in HTTP communication, a new TCP connection is required for each message or each request because at the end of each message, this TCP connection will be terminated. So for a new one, we would require a new TCP connection. But in contrast, when we use the WebSocket protocol, since we only terminate our earlier TCP connection when either the client or the server disconnects, 
we can use one TCP connection to send as many messages as we need from client to the server and to the other direction as well. So this is very important when we are talking about the efficiency and high speed of WebSocket communication. Now that you have some basic understanding about the protocols that we are going to use in our project, let's discuss a little bit more about WebSockets themselves. If you have researched this topic about WebSockets and sockets on the internet, I'm sure you have heard about these two terms, WebSockets and Socket.io. Now WebSocket is the base technology itself. Now this is the most basic form of WebSocket technology and Socket.io is a library that is built on top of that WebSocket technology which makes our developer life so easy. If you want to implement a server-side time using WebSockets themselves, I'm sure you could have, but you may have to write very lengthy code in Flutter and you may have to be very efficient and we have to think of various things that are related to WebSocket theories as well. Now, Socket.io library has taken care of all those groundwork for us so that we can only focus on our application logic and implement it in our front end or the server as we need without requiring, without requiring any uh, low level knowledge about how WebSockets work. If you are going to use WebSockets, you would have to have a very good knowledge in various ground stuff like framing and um, security and all these things you have to consider yourself manually and that is why we are using Socket.io as well in our project. I have a written version of this tutorial series so I will link it in the description below. There are a few prerequisites for the implementation of this project. A decent knowledge on Nest.js, Flutter and TypeScript is recommended and another thing is that Although there are newer versions of Flutter and Nest.js, I will be using slightly older versions because I felt them very stable and I have tested this with these versions. If you want to try out with new versions, please let me know as well how it will go. If you have searched or researched about the sockets implementations and various applications of this WebSocket technology, I'm sure you have seen countless examples of using this technology to implement chat applications. And that is why I want to do something different and implement a server-side timer using this technology. Now, since this server-side timer requires real-time capabilities, we could have done this using a few methods. The first one would be to refresh the client to send a new HTTP request every time we need a new time value. For example, if we have the UI displaying uh, the second 10 to get 9 second, we could have refreshed our user interface. Now as you might have guessed, this is not very practical, right? By the time we have refreshed our UI, maybe 2 seconds have elapsed or 3 seconds have elapsed. So it's not very practical. We need a real time application scenario for our server-side timer. Also, we could have used polling. In polling, what we could have done for this server-side timer is we have our front end and we could have sent a request every second to the back end to get the timer value. But that is not very practical and there may be some errors in our time calculation and also it would be unnecessarily computationally expensive as well. And that is why we have sorted out to using WebSockets for implementing our server-side timer because this will give us high-speed, full duplex communication between the client and the server and that is exactly what we need to implement something like a server-side timer. Let's also have a couple of clarifications about the jargon words that are used in socket communication. When I was learning about this sockets communication, these words confused me a lot. And I have compiled uh, several definitions for most used words in WebSocket communication technologies. WebSocket is the protocol that we are using. It's a protocol like HTTP which depends on the TCP protocol. WebSockets is the API specification of WebSocket protocol. This WebSockets API will support two-way communication as well. And Socket.io is a library built on top of WebSocket protocol that will give us very useful methods and functions 
to implement WebSockets in our applications very easily. Socket is more of a general term and it is used to name an endpoint in a socket communication. Now totally unrelated to our project is webhooks. I just want to mention it here because I was having some doubts between the differences between websockets and webhooks. Now a webhook is something that is used for server to server communication. In contrast, we are using websockets for client server communication. And that is the difference between websocket and webhooks. Although we can mainly divide sockets like TCP IP sockets and Unix domain sockets, we are only interested in TCP IP sockets for this tutorial series. Earlier in the slides, I described the steps in establishing a WebSocket connection and now you can see those things in the diagram using Flutter and NestJS as well. So the Flutter client will first send a request to the server asking for it to upgrade the HTTP connection between this client and server to a WebSocket connection and that is called the handshake. So when the server sends, okay, let's upgrade our connection to WebSocket, that confirmation is uh, sent to the client, they have a handshake. And after that handshake, we say we have a full duplex persistent socket connection between the Flutter client and the NestJS server. And this connection is persistent, which means it will live as long as we, as long as either the client or the server does not disconnect. That means when client or the server disconnects from this web socket connection, we will terminate this a persistent socket connection and that is how this uh, WebSocket connection is established between a Flutter client and a NestJS server. Okay everyone I think that brings us to the end of this first video. It has been my first ever YouTube tutorial and I'm really excited to complete it and I hope you got something out of this video and please go through my written tutorial series as well as it might have more details about this integration as well. We will do the NestJS and Flutter implementations in the upcoming videos and uh, please leave a comment on your ideas about this series and this video and if you have any criticism or feedback regarding my presentation or this project, please leave them as well. I would be really happy to learn from you guys as well. So thanks for watching and please like, share and subscribe to this channel and we will meet in the next one. Till then, bye bye.